While Luigi doesn't have as many games dedicated to himself, the ones that exist are all very unique and diverse. This list includes any games that are just about Luigi, and it's based off how fun they are to play. So with that, let's get her ranked. 12. Luigi's Hammer Toss Yes, this is technically the very first Luigi game. He got a Game & Watch game in 1990, which was a couple years before Mario was missing on the NES and SNES. The Game & Watch is literally a watch. It even tells the time if your Apple Watch isn't up to snuff. Hammer Bros are chucking hammers at the ground, and Luigi must bounce them away with his shield. If you miss five times, then game over. The buttons are surprisingly responsive, but the gameplay is just about as shallow as possible. You'll get bored of this within like five to ten minutes. And that's assuming you can even find this watch. They cost hundreds of dollars, and you'll have to go to a watch store like I did to replace the battery since it'll be dead by now. But hey, you get this sweet La Cucaracha music at the beginning. Okay, I think I'm over this now. 11. Mario is Missing SNES I'm sure you all have heard of this game before. It's one of the thousands of educational games that came out in the 90s, this one starring Luigi. It starts off promising using some nice looking Mario World sprites, but you aren't jumping from level to level. Now look, you won't believe the story when I tell you this. I think it's best to simply read the excerpt from Mario Wiki. <clears throat> in his latest scheme, Bowser decides to flood the earth with hair dryers from have to have it mail order to melt Antarctica. In order to buy the hair dryers, Bowser has his Koopas travel all over the world and steal various important landmarks he plans to sell. Mario, Luigi, and Yoshi follow Bowser to Antarctica to stop him. I have so many questions about this plot. What's Bowser's motivation to do this? Why not use the sun's energy to melt Antarctica? Why is Bowser buying hair dryers from Have to Have It specifically? But most importantly, why in the f would Bowser use hair dryers to do this? Sorry, I just, what a bizarre plot point for a video game in general, you know? But on to the actual game. Luigi has to collect these stolen artifacts and return them to the right places. This is done by jumping on Koopas and answering trivia questions about the landmarks. For an educational game, this is a pretty boring way of going about teaching kids this stuff. And what's worse, some of the trivia facts are straight up wrong. I mean, wow, what's the point of playing to learn if you can't even rely on the information being accurate? You can't expect much enjoyment out of something like this because it was built as an educational game, but it can't even bother to do that well. 10. Mario is Missing NES It's basically the same game, but has less characters and less cities to explore. It also looks slightly worse, but that's to be expected. With that said, that could make this version better because the game already sucks as it is and having less to play is, uh, better? Honestly, both titles are very similar and could be interchanged fairly easily. 9. Luigi Bros. This technically counts as a Luigi game too. It's literally just the arcade version of Mario Bros, but with Luigi as the main character. This is playable through Super Mario 3D World, and honestly, it's not that fun. The controls are horribly stiff. Jumping is awkward because you don't have much control of where you're going in the air. If you want to leap forward, you have to get a running start or you'll just jump in place. I appreciate that there's a two-player mode, but if you're gonna play Mario Bros, just bust out the Super Mario Advance versions. Those are by far the superior way to play this classic title. 8. Super Luigi Bros. Nope, it isn't just a reskin of Super Mario Bros. It's actually featured exclusively in NES Remix 2. This game is Super Mario Bros, but mirrored. Luigi also has a higher jump, which changes the gameplay slightly. And I mean that, even just tapping the jump button launches Luigi into the air, which I kind of hate because of how forced it feels. Just tapping jump shouldn't launch Luigi this high in the air, just a tiny little bit. It also feels weird running to the left the whole time, but it's a novel idea that I'm surprised Nintendo took decades to try out. Since this is Mario Bros. 1, the physics are basically the same. Super Luigi Bros. is still playable, but naturally it feels a bit wonky. Side note though, I'm digging this Luigi background. It's pretty clean looking, even though that has nothing to do with the game itself. Now, if you're wondering what happens when you save Peach, Mario is standing right behind her. She just says, thank you Luigi, your quest is over, which is traditional, but doesn't make sense with the context of Mario beating him to the punch. 
7. Dr. Luigi Because, why not, right? At least Nintendo tried something different with this game with a brand new mode called Operation L. It's exactly like the normal mode, but the pills are all shaped like L's. I love how the pills are still in their wrapping case. Luigi doesn't even bother to take them out. This new mode definitely changes the gameplay in an interesting fashion, but I don't think it warrants that much celebration. This could very easily have been a side mode in a normal Dr. Mario game, but this was the year of Luigi, so they had to do something. I guess. If you played Dr. Mario Online, this game is extremely similar to that one. Even the menu and graphic style is virtually the same. If you don't like Luigi's new mode, Retro Remedy is the same classic formula we're all used to. There's also Virus Buster, which is a touchscreen version of Dr. Mario. This one is okay, although most people will try this once and never touch it again. For what it's worth, it's surprising how fun it is. It really only plays well because of the Wii U's gamepad. The online battles are pretty cool too. At the time, matches were smooth with little to no lag issues, but since it's on the Wii U, nobody's really playing this anymore. But it was a solid online experience while it lasted. This isn't a bad Dr. Mario game, but there's better options out there. 6. Luigi's Mansion Arcade I've been lucky enough to play this one at an actual arcade. This seems like such a hard to come by machine too. We've all played light gun games in the arcade at some point in our lives, but this one is a little different. It's a mashup between light gun and Luigi's Mansion. Par usual, you'll stun ghosts by using a strobe bulb. The burst of light freezes the ghosts, and from there you'll suck them up for points. If there's too many ghosts at once, you can hit the strobe bomb to stun all of them. After pulling on ghosts enough, a meter will fill up allowing you to use power surge to increase your power. Now despite how fun this is, it really depends on how good of condition the machine is in. It's really satisfying physically aiming down the ghosts and sucking them up, but that's only if the machine is functional. The game's graphics and locations are based on Dark Moon, which may turn off some people since the original Luigi's Mansion aesthetic was generally more beloved, but I think it looks pretty great as it is, and it sounds good too. Since it's a light gun game, you don't get to freely move around, outside of occasionally picking directions in the mansion. But for an arcade game, it's a really neat novelty that everyone should get the chance to try. 5. New Super Luigi U Maybe this is considered a Mario game, seeing as it's an expansion of New Super Mario Bros. U, but it's got Luigi in the name, so it felt right to include this. Mario Bros. U is a pretty solid 2D platformer despite its lack of creativity, and Luigi U is kind of on the same page. The only difference is each level is bite-sized and more challenging. The shorter length really helps stages feel better condensed, and the difficulty is interestingly selective. You'll likely be able to blaze through most of these stages, but getting all the star coins can be tricky with 100 seconds on the timer. A lot of them are out of the way and slash or hard to reach, but if you're struggling then you can play as Nabbit. Yeah, he's playable in this game and he's invincible to every enemy. The only drawback is he can't use power-ups, but that hardly matters when you're a running god. As you'd expect, Luigi has a higher jump and longer slide, but you can also switch to Mario's physics if you don't like it. Now, fun fact of the day, there's actually a brand new enemy that came from this expansion, and that is the Big Eep Cheeps. Yep, that's it just that one fish boy. You'll also be able to spot hidden Luigi's in each level, and that's a pretty neat easter egg since this was unveiled during the Year of Luigi as well. 4. Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, or known as Luigi's Mansion 2 in Europe. A sequel to what was originally supposed to showcase the GameCube's technology, Luigi is back with a poltergust in handheld form. Egad needs your help again as the Dark Moon shatters into five pieces, and each piece magically ends up in five different mansions. The gameplay is basically the same as the first game. Run around rooms, blast the ghosts with light to suck them up, and collect a bunch of money. You're also able to jump when sucking, and use the Dark Light device which gives off a rainbow aura to find booze or invisible objects. Objects. The core gameplay still feels really good, and it's fun exploring each room to see which objects are interactable and contain money or ghosts. Instead of the Game Boy Horror for your map, we get the Dual Scream, so uh, that's fun if you're into the dad puns. Now this game has had some criticism over the years, the main issues being the mission structure and ghosts. Unlike the first game where you can more freely roam around the mansion, Dark Moon is completely linear. That might not sound like a bad thing, but it honestly makes the world feel less immersive. Now, I get why they did it. This was on the 3DS, and the goal was to play for little bits at a time, but it definitely loses some of the original game's fun. By the end, it starts to feel like a chore. Some people also complain about the ghosts and how the graphics are too cartoony, and I kind of get that issue, but this is also a kid's game, so I don't really think the change is that big of a deal. The bosses are definitely not as good. Like, they aren't bad per se, but nothing is as memorable as the ones from the original game. Pulter Pup is one of the best new 
characters, he's this adorable little ghost puppy that's kind of Luigi's friend, but he's kind of a pest as well. But there's more than the main campaign. You can also unlock Scare Scraper, which is an awesome multiplayer mode where you'll go from floor to floor and suck up a ton of ghosts. Or you'll find and capture all the polter pups on each floor. There's four different modes to try out. 3. Luigi's Mansion 3 By far, one of Nintendo's best-looking games yet, and it's not even a mainline Mario or Smash Bros. It's Luigi and Gooigi sucking up ghosts and climbing up a hotel to save Mario and Peach. Like, seriously, the cutscenes in this game look like they came straight out of a movie. It's genuinely impressive. Helen Gravely frees King Boo. That's the gist of the story. It introduces a new character, while still retaining the ones we love to see, like King Boo. The Poltergust G00 is almost the same as the one in Dark Moon, although it adds a suction shot which releases a plunger that's used to pull certain objects around the game. One of the biggest changes gameplay-wise is the slamming. After sucking up a certain amount of a ghost, you're able to slam them into the ground or other ghosts to do extra damage. This feels immensely satisfying, and it even throws in a new strategy since you want to try to attack other ghosts that are nearby. The only dilemma with this is that it's a tad bit overpowered. You aren't forced to use the slamming, but it's so convenient that you'll do it naturally every time. The ghost designs are once again more cartoony like in Dark Moon, but honestly, I still like how they look. What's awesome to see return are the bigger, badder boss ghosts. These are by far some of the best boss fights we've seen in a Nintendo game. DJ Phantasmagoria is a female jokey diva ghost, Captain Fishhook is a shark ghost, Serpkey is a pharaoh ghost, what more do I need to say? These boss fights feel epic and like a special event, which is exactly what bosses should strive to be. And I haven't even talked about Gooigi yet. He can be used to walk across spikes or go through sewer drains, and is a surprisingly intuitive character. He doesn't feel slapped on or anything, but more of a direct enhancement to the puzzles in each room. Speaking of the rooms, they are jam-packed with things to do and collect. There is a ton of money to grab, and it feels amazing to just suck it all up. It's the same junky euphoria from collecting coins in New Super Mario Bros. 2, but even better. The multiplayer is also back, and just as fun as it was in Dark Moon, if not more so. Scare Scraper can be played online and runs great, and Scream Park offers a bunch of interesting multiplayer modes. The only problem with this game is it does drag along at times. Some segments can feel overdrawn. Like, I love the whole pyramid floor, but it just seemed to never end. Polterpup constantly taking floor buttons was also a pain since it just felt like a way to pad out game time, and the game itself is more or less linear. There's some diversity in what paths you can take at the beginning, but it's not to the same extent as the original. Speaking of... 2. Luigi's Mansion 3DS I'm still not sure why this wasn't ported to the Switch, but alas, it's a remake of one of Nintendo's most cherished titles. It's virtually the same game, but with a few updates here and there. My personal favorite being the map screen that's constantly displayed on the bottom. I've only played through Luigi's Mansion a couple times, so I haven't memorized where everything is, which means I was constantly pausing in the original game to check. Now, I can just glance at the bottom and move forward. Plus, there's stereoscopic 3D, which can be helpful with aiming and giving each room more depth. The graphics have also been spruced up quite a bit. The textures are more lifelike despite being on a handheld. You can also use the stroll bulb from the newer games if you want to. It's a neat little bonus. Heck, you can even play the game in co-op. While this all sounds nice and dandy, there are some minor frame drops in some portions of the game. The biggest issue, however, is how ghost sucking feels. It works the same as it does in the original, but the circle pad does not give as satisfying a feedback as it does with a GameCube controller. It doesn't feel like you're really wrestling with the ghost, which isn't really the game's fault, it's just how the 3DS itself is designed. It's still perfectly playable, but when your main game mechanic doesn't feel great, that automatically makes it slightly worse. 1. Luigi's Mansion GameCube Not really a shocking pick here, but the original is simply where it's at. Mario gets trapped inside a mansion, so Luigi goes in to save his chonky bro. Most Mario games aren't filled with personality, as gameplay is the centric focus. This is perfectly fine for something like a platformer, and especially back in the 80s and 90s when graphics were more primitive. Luigi's Mansion, on the other hand, breathes life into a character that most people didn't think twice about. Luigi is a scaredy cat. You can see it with the way he waddles around the floor, jumps from every ghost, hums the theme song, it's honestly so adorable. You can't help but love Luigi for his bravery to save his brother, despite being petrified of everything. Sucking up ghosts feels incredible as well. The controls just mesh together perfectly and create a really engrossing gameplay loop. This is because the damage you do on Ghost is reliant on each individual direction on the joystick, which has an analog feel to it due to the GameCube controller's design. It may not have all the new gear from the newer games, 
games, but what it does have is a more open feeling world. There's no mission screen after beating a portrait ghost, you just get the keys and proceed. Speaking of portrait ghosts, these are all really fun to fight. You got Chauncey, the spoiled baby that shrinks you and attacks with rocking horses. Mr. Lug spits heartburn at you. Henry and Orville attack with a toy plane and car. These boss ghosts are something special. You also have the option to catch booze, which is different from the other ghosts because you can't trap them while initiating the suck. I've never tried catching all the booze because half the time they leave the room and you have to chase them around the mansion like a big idiot. It's really the only part of the game that I don't enjoy, but the booze are optional, so it's not that big a deal. This may not be the best Nintendo game of all time, but it's definitely one of the most charming. Luigi time is always the best time. Nintendo just needs to make Luigi's Mansion 4. We all want to see it at this point. But anyway, I'll be back soon ranking more video games and being a gamer and all that. Bye!